Hey guys, how are you? Dr. Thompson here. Hey, welcome to uh, a live broadcast. Today I want to talk to you about sugar, the most addictive drug on the planet. So um, today's interesting <laughs> because uh, when I talk to a lot of people about getting rid of uh, sugar and a lot of forms of sugar out of their diet, um, there tends to be a really emotional response. So just think of this is that if you have an emotional response to not having a specific type of food, chances are there's some level of addiction to it. Okay. And here's the thing. So we all know that sugar, we all know that, uh, uh, you know, and, and I talk a, about, a lot about this in the book, Transformation 28, like the five reasons why you should avoid sugars and grains. Um, the last one that I talk about, because it can increase inflammation, it can cause high cholesterol, high triglycerides. Um, I mean, it, it's, it, it can lead to type two diabetes. It literally can end your life early. And um, a lot of people choose not to avoid sugars and grains. And even though they know that it's bad for them, they decide to continue doing it. So, you know, obviously I, always, I had thought about this is that if it's so hard to not do it, even if you know that it's bad for you, it, there's got to be some kind of uh, addictive properties to sugars and grains and, and things like that. You know, listen, you ask an alcoholic, you ask someone who's, um, you know, addicted to cigarettes, you ask someone who's a drug addict, they all know that what they're doing and the behavior that they're that they're acting out is destructive if they still keep doing it. And so obviously there has to be some connection to the brain, obviously with these drugs and these, uh, you know, alcohol and, 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 you know, everything else. So there has to be some kind of connection to the brain when it comes to sugars and grains and things and desserts and things like that. So sugar, the most addictive drug on the planet. So I better back myself up or I better back this up of what I'm going to talk about. And, um, and there's, there's actually real sources that show the addictive properties of, um, of some of these drugs. So, so let me ask you this question, sugar, is it your drug of choice? And, you know, the reason why I say this is because, um, you know, um, where I grew up, it was the, the standard was kind of like, don't drink, don't smoke, uh, don't do pot. And if you do that, you're, we're really proud of you. You're going to be a success. And it was almost with, if you did all of those other things, you were a loser. Um, but the problem is, is almost everybody that was saying that where they were addicted to sugar instead. So, you know, the thing is, is you say, well, great. I'm, you know, I'm healthy cause I don't drink, I don't smoke, but if you dump tons of sugar into your system, that can actually shorten your life in some instances more than drinking and smoking. <laughs> so you have, you have to ask the question is what is your drug of choice and is it actually sugar? The reason why that I actually look at sugar as a drug is because of this article right here. And this actually comes from about 10, 11 years ago. I'm going to actually show you the source in just a second. So, in this study that was done in 2007, and this is a peer reviewed journal, just so you know that this isn't like, you know, some weird study that was thrown out there. You can actually find this online as a peer reviewed journal. They did this study actually in, uh, at a university in France. So here's what they did. So they gave rats the choice between a uh, water that was sweetened with sugar and water that was infused with cocaine. Now listen to this, 94% of rats actually chose the sugar water over the cocaine water. And what that means was that out of 94% of those rats, they actually had a stronger um, neurochemical attachment to the sugar water versus the cocaine water. Now, if you actually look at this and you see what happens with like addiction pathways inside of the brain and things like that, is that, listen guys, is that anything that's pleasurable. Um, so anything that's uh, pleasurable in the body, hold on, I just lost my thing. Anyway, anything that's um, 
pleasurable inside of the body is actually going to um, uh, release dopamine, okay? So here you have dopamine that gets released and dopamine is what gives you actually pleasure. It gives you that pleasurable feeling. And there's a lot of different things that can actually create Oh, hey, hey, I'm back. All right, sorry, we had a little bit of problem. <laughs> so as I was saying, so dopamine is actually released when um, you jump out of an airplane. Uh, you know, so this is why there's a lot of people who love like daredevil type activities because they get this ding, ding, ding inside of the brain. Um, dopamine is released when you um, have nicotine. Dopamine is, dopamine is released when you um, ingest um, cocaine or snort cocaine. Dopamine is released when you have alcohol. But what's interesting is dopamine is also released when you have sugar. So sugar is um, a very, very powerful drug on the brain. And in fact, 94% of rats actually chose the sugar water over the cocaine water, if you can believe that. So um, here's what's also interesting is when they when they actually the researchers actually increases the increase the dose of the cocaine in the water is that the rats still chose the sugar so even when they gave them more cocaine they actually still chose the sugar so the question actually begs is is that you may not, not be a cocaine addict you may not be a heroin addict you may not be addicted to you know uh narcotics and pain medications you may not be addicted to you know, alcohol, but you probably are addicted to sugar. And here's the th reason why you know that sugar is so bad is look at the, the amount of diabetes and blood sugar issues and unresolved weight gain and inability to lose fat. And, you know, for example, a high amounts of sugar, men, it will crash your testosterone levels. And they've actually saw that they've seen that men's testosterone levels in the last 40 years has literally been cut in half. And I actually think one of the biggest culprits is the fact of how much processed sugars and grains that we actually consume every single day. Now I'm having a little bit of a problem sharing my screen um, on here. And so I was gonna show you, let's see if we can get this back up. There we go. So this, um, this article where it actually comes from is right here, okay? So, the, uh, the title of this article, this was in 2007, and um, it was called Intense Sweetness Surpasses Cocaine Reward. So if you can believe that. So, you know, the thing is, is, is sugar your drug of choice? And I think for a lot of people, it absolutely is. So sorry to say that. And uh, you don't have to go too far because in the book, I actually talk about it, a, an almost sad story, but also a funny story at the same time, is um, about uh, seven or eight years ago, uh, my pastor had a really awesome idea. He says, you know, after church service, sometimes we, uh, we, we have these potlucks and, um, you don't have to go to too many churches. When you look at the potlucks, the food that they serve is absolutely horrendous. Um, it's all comfort food and, uh, it may not have added sugar, but it has the same effect on sugar. Things like grains, processed grains, you know, things like that still have the same effect on the brain as actually just table sugar. And so we had the great idea that we were going to have a healthy potluck. And here's the thing. All we did was we took some of the, the most common potluck uh, type dishes from the church. And all we did was he substituted the ingredients. So instead of 
you know, like for example, wheat flour, uh, we chose like coconut flour. Um, you know, instead of um, mashed potatoes, we had mashed cauliflower. Okay, we call them mashed potatoes. So I have uh, literally a whole recipe book that we made that has great recipes that taste great. They're just substituting, replacing bad with good. And um, so you take um, a lot of the processed grains and the sugars out of it. Well, when the congregation caught wind of this, you would have thought that it was almost similar to telling everyone to meet, meet at a bar and then uh, saying, hey, sorry, <laughs> no alcohol. <laughs> I mean, so there was a, a, a huge emotional backlash. It literally was just one meal that we were asking them to eat healthy, but the emotional backlash and the anger that that came from doing this is that I knew as like, if you have that much of an emotional attachment to not eating sugar at one meal, then chances are you're probably addicted to it. And um, I was I was so shocked. I was so surprised. And that actually got me into looking is what's the emotional attachment? What's the addictive properties actually of sugar? Well, we still had the potluck. Some people refused to show up um, and, you know, because of it. But the people who did and the people who, you know, substituted, you know, the bad ingredients with the good ingredients, most of them actually came up afterwards and apologized. And they said, you know, we thought that this was going to be nothing but eating cottage, cottage cheese and melted toast. Um, but we really found that eating this way actually tastes good and it's good for you. And that was a win-win. So the, um, you know, the thing is, is that when I tell people, hey, you need to get off of sugars and you need to get off of grains, I mean, that's just a start. Is that if you have, again, an emotional reaction to it, you need to check yourself and say, hey, maybe I have an addiction to sugar. Now, there's a lot of... Uh, you know, people out there, there's a lot of nutritions out there, you know, that say, hey, you should never deprive yourself. You should never, you know, you should never do that, you know, because it's going to, you're going to rebound and you're going to eat, you know, way more sugar if you don't think that you can ever have it. Well, here's the thing. If you're addicted to something, the best way to go off of it is to go cold turkey. And you're going to find that once you do this cold turkey, you don't feel so hot for seven to 10 days. But after that seven to 10 days, the cravings actually go away. So if you can imagine that you're not craving this food all the time and for the rest of your life, um, so it's not necessarily depriving yourself for your whole life. It's um, it's just running through seven to 10 days and then you don't even really want it anymore. And then in fact, it doesn't really even taste that good either. So it's not about depriving yourself obviously for the rest of your life. You have to think about what you gain when you start coming off sugars and grains. So listen, what you gain is coming off of sugars and grains is that you gain more energy. You gain less inflammation. Uh, you actually will lose weight <laughs> doing this for most people who don't have other symptoms or other issues that are going on. Um, you, uh, you just typically sleep better. You feel better. You, uh, you actually have better bowel movements too. And so just think about like giving up something, what you gain as a result. So sugar, like I said, is it your drug of choice? So I'm having a lot of issues uh, sharing my screen with you. I'll look into this a little bit later, but um, coming up uh, this Saturday. So Saturday, I'm gonna leave a link in the, uh, in the comments uh, where you can actually register for it. So this Saturday, we are going to be uh, going over how to do and safely do a five-day water fast. So this is going to be at Exemplify Health Center in Yorkville and from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock. So I'm going to go over the ins and outs of how to do a five-day water fast. I'm going to go over why men typically do better than women. I'm going to go over who should do a fast, who would benefit from it, and who absolutely shouldn't do a fast. So we had a couple of people, I told them, looking at some of the lab work, I said, don't do the fast. They wanted to do it anyway, and they felt absolutely horrible. And they're like, yep, I know it. You were right. I should have done it. So I'll go over who should do it, who shouldn't do it, and how you, not only what you need during, and it's called minerals, and what you should actually do afterwards to reintroduce food and stimulate your digestive system, obviously, again. I actually just had a, a husband and wife who, yes, they, they, I told them that they could, in fact, do a fast. And they did a five-day water fast. And um, 
uh, you know, one, one gentleman had tons of chronic knee pain in both knees. And he's like, after five days, he's like, all of the inflammation was gone. We're going to go over why that happened. Uh, the woman, uh, the, 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 his wife, you know, who did it, she, um, she lost about 10 pounds of just water weight and swelling. We're going to go over why that happens too. Um, so we're going to go over the ins and outs of that. That's going to be Saturday, nine o'clock to 10 o'clock. When you come to that, I'm also going to give you my free fasting guide. So we're going to show you how to do a five day water fast in the guide. Also like intermittent fast and how you become an intermittent faster, which I'm a huge fan of. And, um, and then we'll go over like what you need, uh, to do that five day water fast. And actually when you do it, how you can save a lot of money cause you're not eating out. <laughs> Some of you have told me you've taken the hit from all of the Christmas shopping. Now, in addition to that, January 19th is our kickoff for the T28 challenge. We have two locations that are going to be going on. Uh, January 19th, we're kicking off in Yorkville and January 19th, we're kicking off in Morris, Illinois too. So this is where our average weight loss in 28 days was 18 pounds. The last challenge that we did, no joke. Um, so now we're going to be incorporating a version when we do this of intermittent fasting. We're going to show you the best way to work out that only takes minutes a day. And um, on top of that, uh, people who um, are part of the challenge, uh, we are going to be giving them the all of the online resources. So I have a whole learning course that we've created on the T28 challenge. And so this takes literally through start to finish so that failure is not an option. So I actually created that to make sure that if you're doing the challenge, that you're going to be successful at it and we don't give you the opportunity to fail. So amazing things can happen in 28 days. I'm going to leave the link below for men, for women in both Yorkville and the Morris locations. Uh, and our early bird discount is, uh, is going to be done on tomorrow so if you don't sign up by tomorrow it's fine you'll just pay full fee for it but i'm going to send you the links um, so that uh, you guys uh, can actually uh, schedule your no sweat consultation get signed up for it uh, either at the morris location or the yorkville location so guys uh be well uh hey if you have any comments you have any questions leave them in the comments below and if you have something that you want me to talk about um, let me know too and I'll be uh, going on live uh, leading up to the challenge and going over some principles from the book. So stay tuned for some more awesome content that I'm going to be sharing with you. Hey, guys, be well, and we'll see you soon.